Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. So today we have the mighty EF in front of me and we're gonna be changing the rear diff. So in this car at the moment has a locker. You know, we're not gonna be passing any roadworthies with that. So, so when this car was sold to me, I ended up getting a spare complete rear end for it, which is over here. So it's just another 308 open rear end. So we've got the diff sitting right there and we've got two spare axles sitting here. So I'm gonna put those in because right now we have a bit of a clunky, noisy sort of left, I think, rear axle. So I'm just gonna replace the whole lot. So I've got the doors sort of half open because there's heaps of construction work going on outside and the wind is insane today. So I don't want it to destroy the video too much, but when we get into it, I'll open the door up so we get more light and uh, we might have to deal with just a little bit of wind noise. In today's video, I just wanna show you how to, you know, swap a diff over in one of these cars. They're pretty easy to do. It took me about 20 minutes to pull the axles and diff out of that other center. So yeah, I'm just gonna jack up the arse end of the car and show you exactly what to do to change the diffs in one of these cars. They're so easy. Even if you weld them, they're just the easiest things to work on. So without further ado, I'm just gonna set myself up, get the car in jack stands and we'll start. All right, so we've got the easy part done. What I like to do as well is I uh, get jack stands under the car, let the axle droop down. Just makes it easier to work on. You can get under there a bit easier. And uh, when you undo all the watts links and stuff, it's just not all got tension and shit on it. So you can work with it a little bit easier. So next we just uh, knock the, uh, the 15 mils off the recaliper. So we can take the recaliper off. Also make sure when you're doing all this, uh, you know, relieve all your, um, your handbrake and uh, put it in neutral. Obviously chock the front of the car and you're right. Both bolts are out of the caliper, the caterpillar. Just light taps and she should come right out. If you don't have any bungee cord, just sit it on the arm there and whack your rotor off. Oh, this one has the uh, retainer screw, so I'll pop him out. We'll pop our retainer screw off. Sometimes these can be a bit of a pain if the uh, drum shoes decide to stick on the inside. Oh shit, sorry. Couple light taps, don't hurt your rotor. And that's ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then we'll start undoing the diff center. All right, so we find ourselves under the car. These two bars here are what's called, uh, what's called your watts link. It's called a watts link, or as I call them, a what it's link. What we're gonna do here is just undo, there's a 19 mil nut on this side and a 19 mil nut on the other side. Buzz both of these bolts off and then uh, jack the diff up just so these bolts can come out nice and easy and then the arm should just drop out of the way. And then we'll take the uh, the center bolt out and just remove this whole bracket here. That way we can get to all of our diff bolts and Bob's your his cousin's daughter. So just grab your 19, put it on the arse end of this bolt. Once you get it in there, uh, like that. And just buzz your, your top bolt off. Now you can try and take them out. Oh, this one's gonna come out nice and easy. Or so I thought. But yeah, if you find they're not, just jack up the diff just a little bit, relieve tension. And sort of just jack with one hand until you feel them. That one's out. And they're both out. And then that should be a 17 or a 19, I can't remember. 19. Oh, move those arms out the way. Yeah. And then remember the orientation. Whee! And then boink. So now we have a lot more access to our biff dolts. They're all a 13 mil from memory. The hardest part I find about changing these diffs is uh, getting the covers off because sometimes they can be like so siliconed on that they just will not come off. Uh, so just take your time and don't destroy the cover. So I'm just gonna buzz all these bolts off and we're gonna slowly. Uh, we'll drip this diff back down and then I'm gonna put my drain pan under it and we'll undo all the bolts here Let it drain out before we start undoing the axles. Get your drain pan ready, which I've already got down there And I like to undo this bottom one first because it acts as like a drain bolt Someone's done them up to about a million newton meters of torque And then boom, out comes your oil So I like to do that one first just so the uh, it can drain while we uh I'm doing the rest. Now always when you change your diff guys, remember the ratios, they are marked on top of the axles, but it's just good to just double check before you put them in. I'm pretty sure the three two threes are too big for this uh, center anyway. So this is a 308. The uh, diff oil is looking a bit metallic, so it probably goes to show our bad knock we've had. So when you get all the bolts off, there's two little ears behind the cover. So just pry on it, just gently, don't force it. If it forcing it, then try and break there you go. Try and break the uh, the seal first, like that. Now there's a dowel at the bottom and a dowel at the top. 
So you want to just try to sort of wiggle it off those dowels, because then once you break those, uh, once you break that seal around the cover, you sort of wiggle it off the dowels. Nearly. Ah, bitch. You see our weldy goodness? I really apologise if the construction work over there is uh, driving you nuts, because it's driving me nuts. Uh, this is the reason we keep it in neutral and handbrake off, because we need to be able to rotate this. There is a hole, and there is a, I think it's a 13 millimeter nut. Sorry, no, 14. And you just gotta undo four of these, and those are your axle nuts. So you'll see there's one, two, three holes in the hub. You want the biggest hole, <laughs> and then simply just undo them. And keep doing that until you get all four. All right, now all four of those are undone. Oh, fucking shut up. It just won't shut up. The way I try and do this, screwdriver behind there. Like that. There's your axle. So I'm gonna be replacing these. So I'll do the same thing on the other side and we'll get ready to pull the diff center out. I'm gonna keep saying it. I really apologize for the noise outside. It's driving me nuts. They're drilling holes for retaining walls, so. It is like shaking the ground as well, and that is literally in the next estate. <laughs> so now we're going to just take the diff out, so 14 mil, and I'm going to take the uh, caps off and leave them in the orientation they come off. You'll be asking me why I'm using garden gloves, because I left my automotive gloves at my other house, and I'm not driving 45 minutes to go get them. <laughs> I always take these off in the correct orientation. Now just be prepared, because sometimes a diff just likes to fall out, other times it doesn't, so I just get a hold of the diff just in case. Not gonna fall out now one time when i was working on my skyline my diff fell out and i had my phone light under it and the diff landed straight on my phone and smashed my phone into smithereens so i've learnt from that now the diff should come out a lot of the times just rotate it and give it a bit of a helping hand and just be gentle the way you pry them out just making sure i've got no axles in there <laughs> that'd be pretty funny i've done that before i've tried to get a diff out and the axles are still in there oh well guys that was a struggle Oof. Been fighting it for like 20 minutes. Usually this is the easy part. <laughs> for some reason that diff was just so stuck in there. I managed to get a jack handle in there and just kick the shit out of it and pry it out. And I got it to move. Oh, there we go. Fucking hell. That was so much harder than it should have been. <sighs> All right guys, so I just put the new diff center in. Um, I didn't film it because I was laying right where you guys are under it with it on my chest, trying to get it in. Cause you really got to wrestle these in on the most perfect angle, you gotta put the shims in first. What I usually do is just get the uh, get one of the shims and just dip it in some oil and then stick it to the side. It just helps it stay in place so it doesn't fall over every time you go to put the center in and hold the cups in and just sort of lay it on my chest and just roll it in gently. And then I just get it ever so slightly into the shims. Once it's in there, a couple of light taps with the hammer and then it just sort of popped into place. Now I use the existing shims and caps from this actual diff because I want it to be, you know, same to the diff. If you're finding it's getting very tight, um, you know, you can get those uh, those diff spreaders, whatever they're called, uh, but you don't really need them if the diff, you know, is out of another car. So uh, that's all gone in and it spins. So I'm just going to bolt the cap on or the caps and uh, we'll get ready to put the cover on and uh, clean up this, clean up this back mating surface here and on the cover and we'll put some silicon on there and bolt it all together. So hey guys, it's me from the future and I did forget to mention in this video going back while I'm editing that if you're gonna change the diff for long term, it's definitely good to get a matching set of gears because they're gonna obviously be worn and lashed to each other. Because I'm just gonna be changing this diff to go for a road with it, I haven't decided to change opinion. It's just easier just to change the crown, drive around for a bit, get the road worthy, and then put the old center back in with the uh, with the locker. So if you're gonna change it for long term, definitely make sure you get the matching set of gears. If you go 323, if you go 308, that way you just, uh, it all meshes together and, uh, and you won't have any premature wear. I've applied a little bit of Permatex onto the back cover, just giving this a good clean. There is a little bit of material still left on here, but I'm not going to go too far with it because I'm going to be taking this cover off soon because after we get the roadworthy, I'm most likely going to be rewelding this diff. Probably no point going crazy and going ham. I've got a cover here, just got the Permatex around it. I'm just going to put a little bit of Permatex down the bottom there and just around the outside of the bolt holes. So I've just put a little bit of Permatex around the bolt holes as well. It's something I like to do. You don't really have to do it. Let's put the cover on. Like that. Start running our bolts in. 
And this is an annoying thing because I accidentally kicked this over before, so I can't remember which way it went on. Oh, I'm just gonna check the other car. The other diff, sorry. Okay, finally going one way. Just leave that loose for now. All right, now that the watts link and everything's all bolted up at the back, it's time to put the axles in. So EFs have shorter axles than AUs. Like that. Line up the backing plate. So we got this side in, and now we just gotta go do the other side. Fingers crossed it all spins. It feels like the diff is spinning, which is good. All right, guys, good news. The construction work over there has stopped. We'll finally get back to work without annoying noises. So pretty much got it all buttoned up, got both axles in there. So diff is spinning, both axles are spinning and it's definitely a pegger now. <laughs> so I just gotta put these uh, calipers on, fill her up with oil and we're good to go. So fingers crossed, everything's all good. And now we have an open diff so we can go get a roadworthy. And I've got the uh, lock diff over there which I'm probably gonna end up putting in the AU anyway. All right, so just like we uh, did in the removal, everything goes the same when we assemble. So now we have our gear oil to put in, going under the car. So we just cracked the fill plug off and it's the 22 mil. Now is the boring part where we just put all the gear oil in there. So I've let the uh, silicon dry for about an hour now. Yeah, if I touch the uh, silicon on the outside, it's all, it's all hard now. So it's fine to put some oil in now and hopefully it holds it all and then we can go for a drive. And, and fingers crossed this diff is all good. So now the boring part is literally just staying here like this for a while and fill it up. So we'll bring you back when we're at the full level. All right guys, so everything's back together. All the oil is in, no jack stands underneath, so we'll just let it down very slowly. Like that. Beautiful. And she is back on the ground. So no oil leaks, which is good. So I'm just gonna move everything out the way and we'll go for a bit of a drive. We're moving. We are moving. Now I hope this diff isn't whiny, <laughs> otherwise we're gonna do that for nothing. So far, it's okay. <laughs> I could hear a little knock in the back, but nowhere near as bad as it used to be, but we'll find out when we go faster. It's still there, only just though. I can still hear it, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the pinion? Yeah, it's weird. Before it was very constant, it was like duck, 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 duck. Now there's like a thud when you lift off the throttle and that's it. Weird. But it drives fantastic. Oh, going around corners like Ugh, before. <laughs> it could even be the uh, the universal joint in the drive shaft. Oh, our car still feels great. So what we'll do is we'll go home, we'll just park it on the street and make sure there's no, uh, no leaks coming out of the uh, wheel seals or the diff. Well, guys, we're back and had it parked for a while and looked underneath, no leaks. So back to an open diff for now. But uh, it still drives really nice. Uh, it doesn't, you know, try and kill me every corner like the locker did. Gave me the little inkling to uh, put my foot down a little bit. No, nah, I'm wrapped with that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, get a good idea of changing a E-Series Falcon, AU, all the same. Pretty easy, it was a very easy job. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that one and uh, got a little bit of information and hopefully it can help you uh, change your diff and go do it because it's piece piss. Well guys, we'll see you in the next video. So take care everyone. Bye-bye.